living here in South Carolina, I'm sure that you're aware of some of the things I'm about to talk about. The lost cause. We are studying history. And history is an open discussion based on evidence. Uh, people can talk about it, debate it, change it. We can reinterpret it. What the lost cause is, is a memory. The lost cause is a myth that emerges after the Civil War and after Reconstruction because the white Southern culture needed to develop a sanitized version of the Civil War and Reconstruction. They needed to have some, some version of that time period that was not based on evidence, that was not based on what actually happened. They needed something that was less troublesome. A myth emerges based on the culture, the, the, the writings, the art, the poetry, that kind of can be wrapped up in what we call the lost cause. And here are some of the key factors. Uh, one of the biggest ones is this idea that there's no slavery here. The cause of the Civil War wasn't slavery. And yet we have their words to know that that's not true. I read through the, Sec the South Carolina Declaration of Secession, the Mississippi Declaration, the cornerstone speech of Alexander Stevens. We know that slavery was the cause of the war, the extension of slavery into the West, particularly. They wanted, they wanted to say that it was just about states' rights, and we know that that's not really true either. Because the main thing that South Carolina complained about in their Declaration of Secession was the fact that the 14 northern free soil states were not following the federal Fugitive Slave Act. So if the federal law was protecting slavery, then they were more than happy with the federal government taking away the northern states' rights. They were passing things called personal liberty laws, which helped protect those runaway slaves. So we know this is not really true, but they didn't. <laughs> but it's embarrassing to say that we fought a war for slavery. It was about states' rights. And after Reconstruction, that's how they're implementing Jim Crow. So they needed to say that Jim Crow was okay, so states' rights was okay. Remember the troops. This is another thing. Remember how brave they fought on both sides? Remember the troops, not the black troops. Remember the troops and how brave they were. They're going to erect monuments to help remember how brave they were and how uh, the long odds that they fought against. And it was a lost cause. They knew they were going to fight, but they fought bravely. Just don't talk about the causes. It wasn't about slavery. Don't Just don't talk about the causes. We're going to remember the troops so we can forget the cause. They're going to create this myth that the slaves were happy. In fact, there's going to be some statues built uh, that talk about this. Um, Gone with the Wind, there's a character referred to as Mammy. So we sometimes it's referred to as uh, Mammy. Uh, of, uh, the, I forget the name of it. But this idea that they were happy on the plantation and they wanted to go back. Um, General Lee, in particular, is going to be honored as sort of this deified, honorific guy. He was an honorable and noble soldier who just wanted to fight for his homeland and he had no views on slavery, which is just not true. He managed a plantation. He was known for being a particularly cruel master. Uh, Jackson, Stonewall Jackson, is also going to be honored in uh, this way. And um, <laughs> worse comes to worse. Look at the plantations. Weren't they pretty? Look at those big hoop skirt dresses. Look how nice the men look in their uniforms, right? And it really is just a, a total... Uh, memory of the past that didn't exist. And it's a way to deify this white culture of the South before the war and ignore all the things that happened as a re uh, that led to the war. And they're going to build monuments, lots and lots of monuments. There's going to be monuments to Lee. There's going to be monuments to Calhoun. There's going to be monuments to Ben Tillman. There's going to be monuments to Confederate soldiers. There's lots of monuments to Nathaniel Bedford Forrest that are still up that uh, he's the guy that started the Ku Klux Klan. So the lost cause mythology is going to permeate everything throughout the next 80 years or so, all the way up into the civil rights movement before we finally get people asking different questions about the past. And I know this video is going long, but it's on my mind. Um, the other thing about it, so uh, <laughs> let's just stop there. <laughs>